All right, I got holes. Still not sure how I'm gonna do all the ones down there. But whatever, let's go. Hello, Mr. Ansel. Do you have any idea what you're doing here? Uh, no. Oh, very good. Carry on, carry on. All right, halfway sewn on the top or the bottom. And I just got an idea. I saw some saw horses under the house. I'm thinking if I replace those with saw horses, then I'll be able to get to this edge to sew that after I finish this. Ha! Oh, it's gonna be a piece of cake now. Ish. Still have to make like tons of holes, but I can get in there now. I have to make sure this stays straight. Hey Chief Boat Inspector, how am I doing? Oh, good. Did, did you know that they were baby carriers? You said it right? Did you know that these were called baby carriers? Alright, now what? I don't know. Now what, Aurora? Um, fix, fix that in, Jamie. Man, that is pretty cool. Did you want to do... Sure, what to do next? Is there a magical cover this in fiberglass thing? Fiberglass is tricky and it's disgusting. And it's hard to get a smooth surface, especially when I only have the uh, the type of cloth that's like really rough. None of the hardware stores I went to two days ago had the the, the smooth cloth, the fine cloth, the woven stuff. So I have this stuff. The fiberglass is itchy. The fiberglass is itchy? Yeah. Yeah, I guess you better not touch it. And I have 10 yards of this, which is ah, pretty much like barely enough to carry, to cover two of these. So the neighbor over there has a spot where he's putting in a shed, so it's flat. And he said I could make a bit of a mess over there. So, I'm relocating my operation next door for the fiberglass part. All right, resin. You know, they almost didn't give me the hardener when I bought the resin, which makes the resin totally useless. Luckily, I uh, said something and thought of it at the time. I was like, dude, where's the hardener? He's like, oh, yeah, you need that. Yeah, I do. All right. <clears throat> Trying to figure out how to arrange the fiberglass on this thing to do this. Like I could take a, a big sheet and just wrap it around the whole thing, but I'm not going to be able to get resin all the way around the whole thing. And I'm afraid that if I put a, a sheet of fiberglass on and only resin part way and then come back to it later, where it stops, it's going to be like kind of a rough extra lumpy part. So I think whatever cloth I put on, I have to resin the whole thing. Because resin overlapping over the cloth will just, it'll like smooth it out. But cloth overlapping the resin, I think it's going to make a rough spot. So, alright, this is what I'm going to do. I've got like, the cross section is basically a triangle, right? Like, so, I'm going to put fiberglass along one, the top point of the triangle all the way down and then rotate it a third 
and do the same thing, and rotate it a third and do the same thing. So three different sheets. So I need to cut this stuff uh, into strips that will fit roughly a third of the way around. And I have really crappy, like, already broken scissors, but, you know, I'm glad to have the scissors. Yeah. Boy, a tape measure would be great right now. Oh. This thing should be four feet long. Yeah. All right, I got that hacked off. 16 feet. All right, from the, the bottom, which is upside down, so the top ridge down both sides is three feet total. It's a foot and a half on each side. So I guess cut this almost three feet wide. All right, it's a little over four feet wide. Four feet, uh, an inch and three quarters. So take a foot, foot and a half off. Yeah, let's take a foot and a half off about there. I'll make it a foot and four inches off. That'll leave like two feet, 10 inches, I think. I did also purchase some safety equipment. Very important when working with polyester resin. Oh, this stuff is so gross. I, I did a giant fiberglass project, I don't know, like 10 or 15 years ago. And I don't remember a lot other than it just being this horrible experience interspersed with chocolate milkshakes and hamburgers and then the final results were amazing. I wish I could remember how long the resin takes to cure and how much hardener to put in. There's my cloth on there. Just a bit of snipping and folding. Take care of the corners and I should be ready to go, kind of. So polyester resin is just as horrible as I remember. But I got it done. Well, this part anyway. Which is most of this pontoon. There's just an inch left of space along the bottom there. And then, you know, the top part, which is underneath right now. But it's looking pretty good. Just a couple bubbles, but eh. Ooh, dead sexy, eh? Dead sexy. Dead sexy. <laughs> and I remembered from when I did this long ago that you can get the polyester resin off your hands by putting your hands in sand. And there's like, you know, sand over there. And just scrubbing it around in the sand and it comes off. So the polyester resin is the consistency of honey and you just start smearing it on there. At least that's what I did. I just used a, a little mixing container to pour some resin in and then a little bit of hardener. And I'm not using as much hardener as I'm supposed to use because the stuff cures faster in the sun. I don't want it. It was already starting to get thick before I was done putting it on a few times. Um, anyway, I d and then I just used a plastic scraper to smear it on there. And it's messy and horrible and it's corrosive and stings, especially if you get a cut from tying all those knots. I had a blister and then I got resin in it. It feels kind of like someone's sanding your skin with sandpaper and lemon juice. But anyway, the results come out really strong and stuff. And uh, it's still a little bit tacky today. So I'm putting it out here on my neighbor's dock to get some sun, because the sun will help cure it the rest of the way. Because next I have to do the other side, the, the top side. And I don't want to flip it over and have it resting on this until it's totally cured. So now I'm just like hanging out waiting. God, it's the hardest part of doing these projects. Waiting. Right out.